Titan missile explosion within a hair's breadth of disaster. In September 1980, the United States public was shocked by the news of nuclear disaster avoided. In the crop field just a few miles away from the town of Damascus, Arkansas, there was a 9 megaton nuclear warhead waiting to explode. Had the bomb gone off, it would have caused a nuclear disaster of unprecedented scale, one that neither the United States nor the world has seen by that time. The nuclear head was part of the U.S. Air Force Titan II intercontinental ballistic missile. It was blown out of the missile silo when the two-stage liquid-fueled rocket exploded. A Roman candle-like explosion was so massive that it illuminated the entire area and threw the warhead 100 feet away from the launch site complex. The strategic missile site 374-7, where the explosion took place, was one of the 18 such sites in Arkansas under the control of the 308th Strategic Missile Wing. The entire silo was dug underground and inside the heavily protected base, so the explosion was certainly not a matter of sabotage. Missile malfunction was also not an option. The LGM 25C Titan II missiles, although many found them obsolete, were the best ballistic missiles the United States Armed Forces had during the Cold War. Their design had no flaws. These rockets were used not only for military purposes, but for NASA's space program as well. The explosion that nearly caused the disaster the Americans have never seen was the aftermath of a rather bizarre accident. Welcome to Dark History, where we unravel the most disastrous events in history. If you want to support the channel, consider subscribing and like this video. The Titan II program was established by the United States in 1960 as a response to the Soviet nuclear arsenal. A total of 54 launch site complexes were built in three states. 18 of these were located in Arkansas, and one of them was 374-7. Each site was a massive and solidly built underground complex consisting of the access portal, junction, launch control center, and launch silo. Inside the silo, there was a 10-foot in diameter, 103-foot-long, and 234,000-pound's heavy Titan II rocket armed with a 9-megatons W-53 nuclear warhead. The rocket consisted of two stages, power vehicles, each comprising a rocket engine, fuel, and oxidizers. The fuel, known as Aerozine 50, was a high-energy, hypergolic fuel. Hypergolic means that it spontaneously ignites when in contact with a dinitrogen tetroxide oxidizer. As rocket propellants, these two were a perfect combination. However, outside the rocket's airframe, the mixture was hazardous. For this reason, Titan II launch silos were subjected to constant inspections to check the eventual leaking or any other malfunctions. On September 18, 1980, two workers wearing safety suits entered the silo 374-7 for a regular inspection. Following the standard procedure, they first inspected the Tom Post stage of the rocket. One of the workers, Airman David P. Powell, was removing a pressure cap from the stage oxidizer when a socket fell off his wrench and dropped down the silo. The 8-pound socket bounced off the silo construction, hit the stage 1 airframe, and pierced its shell. The Aerozine 50 inside started to leak. A dense cloud of fuel began to fill the silo. Let alone the fact that the fuel itself was toxic. If it came into contact with the oxidizer, it would have released a tremendous amount of energy. A confined space, such as a missile silo, would turn it into a gigantic explosion. Both workers immediately left the silo and sealed the blast doors at the junction. They ran to report the accident to the commander of the base. Aware of the danger of the situation, the commander had no other choice but to evacuate the base. The word of the accident quickly reached the commander of the 308th Strategic Missile Wing, who formed a potential hazard team. The Air Force police rushed to the site to seal it. As a precautionary measure, they also began evacuating civilians from the nearby farms and settlements. Everything was done by the book. On the evening of September 18th, the first team was sent to the site to inspect the situation. Airman Rex Huckley and Greg Devlin broke into the compound through the barbed wire and approached the underground complex. Their task was to get down and establish the amount of gas that leaked out of stage one. Two airmen broke through the outer portal, but once they entered the access portal, they could not open the inner blast doors. 
Another attempt was made on early September 19th when the second team was then sent to reach the silo to make the necessary measurements. Senior Airman David Livingston and Sergeant Jeff K. Kennedy managed to enter the silo. Their vapor detectors detected the maximum amount of fuel concentrations in the silo, meaning the silo was filled with an explosive atmosphere. The team was ordered to evacuate the silo and wait for further instructions. Once aware of the situation, the command issued the team an order to re-enter the silo and turn on the exhausting fan. This, they believed, would reduce the amount of explosive gases inside the silo. Upon finishing his task, Senior Airman David Livingston returned to the surface to join Sergeant Kennedy. Just a minute after, around 3 a.m., a powerful explosion shook the area. A blast of fire broke through the 740-ton silo door and rose high in the air. It catapulted the Stage 2 part of the missile along with the warhead high in the air. Then, the Stage 2 exploded, lighting up the entire area as if it was daylight. The warhead landed about 100 feet from the launch complex's entry gate. Sergeant Kennedy was blown 150 feet away from the silo. He ended up only with a broken leg. Unfortunately, Senior Airman Livingston was not that lucky. He was buried by the rubble of the silo door. A few hours later, he was rescued but eventually died of his injuries in the hospital. 21 other servicemen were injured in the blast. Even though the accident involved the explosion of a nuclear intercontinental ballistic missile, the nuclear disaster was avoided. Not only that the warhead didn't explode, but there was no leakage of radioactive material as well. Once a congressional inquiry was over, the whole blame for the accident was put on the human factor. The Titan II missile program was declared reliable. Warhead safety features operated flawlessly, preventing the nuclear explosion even though the entire missile that carried it exploded. Still, there was a question of how a thing such as a socket could have destroyed the $10.5 million $1963, worth complex with an annual operation cost of almost $2 million $1963. The answer lies in the wrong type of wrench used for the work. Airman Powell, who dropped the socket, later claimed that he made a mistake by taking a ratchet wrench with him instead of the torque wrench. He realized the mistake he made, but at that time he was already inside the silo and wearing his protective suit. Because he didn't want to waste time, he decided to use the wrench he brought. Once he opened the pressure cap, the socket simply fell off the ratchet and caused damage to the stage 1 fuel tank, resulting in the entire silo being filled with rocket fuel. In such conditions, the explosion was just a matter of time. However, there is an opinion that a spark from the ventilation fan Livingston switched on ignited the fuel and caused the explosion. The cleanup operation of the Strategic Missile Site 374-7 began in October 1960. Once the site was cleaned and declared safe, the Air Force assessed what to do with the complex. Since the price of replacing the complex was 10 times bigger than the cost of demolition, the authorities went with a cheaper solution. The complex was sealed with soil, gravel, and small concrete debris. As for the men involved in the inspection operation, six of them were awarded Airmen's Medals for Heroism in May 1981 for their actions, including late Livingston. The government didn't abandon the Titan II missile program. The Air Force continued to use it until 1987. The Congressional Committee instead recommended improving the communications between the Air Force and local civilian authorities in dealing with potential crises. The Titan missile explosion was there to serve as a reminder that only a moment of carelessness in dealing with arms separates us from disaster. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe. See you next time.